What's up, folks? Mr. Antonio Rankin, rocking with uh, Grand Dossier TV. I'm my mama's son. That's how we get down. Here with the legend, <laughs> my guy, Mr. Darius. You know what I'm saying? Honored to be here, actually. You know, always believed you were a real one, so yeah, definitely appreciate the, uh, the, the opportunity to talk my ish. show with Grand Dossier TV where I'm here with my man Antonio Rankin where we're going to talk about your favorite Laker, not LeBron, not Kobe, not even Shaq, but Kwame, number one draft pick, Brown. The new official GOAT the as new, far as I'm concerned. There you go, the new GOAT. <laughs> so, Antonio, man, how you doing today and what are your thoughts on the latest podcast from Kwame, like Stephen A. Smith say, Brown. Oh, wow. See, that open-ended question right there. You're going to have me talking for 40, 45 hours. Oh, man. I mean, first, officially, of course, Kwame's my man now. And I feel absolutely terrible for buying this, all of the BS, all of the hate over the years, all just everything, all the negative opinions of this man. I, I feel awful. And Kwame, if you're listening, if I don't know where am I looking for, I need to speak to Kwame. There it is. Kwame, if you're listening, I apologize, brother. King. I truly do, man. I fell for the BS just like everyone else. That man is a legend. He is the truth. That man is the truth. He's a real one. And God bless him. We needed him to speak out so much sooner. It took him 21 years. And he explained why. You know, that he just simply he didn't want to be caught up in the drama, all the BS. He was keeping to himself. He had no reason to get involved and say anything because it's actually he made a good point. He said, um, you know, with all the stuff Jordan's doing, imagine if me, an 18-year-old kid, 18, 19, whichever, uh, imagine if I spoke up against Michael Jordan or anything that's going on mm -hmm. as far as my position. Where do you who do you think is going to listen? Nobody. Nobody. Not a soul. <laughs> not a soul speaking. So now that, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Becky with the good hair <laughs> is, uh, had the nerve <laughs> to say something and challenge this man, you know, he's like, hey, why not? Why not? Thank God for him. Thank you. Thank you, Matt Barnes. <laughs> so, my Thank question, you, Stephen A. My question is, what got Kwame Brown ticked off? What, what happened? Like, if, Tell me, because, you know, I've been watching some podcasts lately about that smoke, Rachel Nichols, uh, who else? Stephen A. Smith. He came for Skip Bayless a little bit, but let him off the hook. He even came for our girl, uh, Jamel Eagle. So what, tell me from the beginning, what happened in your opinion that ticked Kwame off? I'll be, I'll keep it all the way 100. I was trying to listen to the original, the, the Up in Smoke uh, podcast. Mm -hmm. Got look halfway through it. I still haven't gotten to the section or found the part that, uh, that obviously ticked off Kwame. Mm -hmm. So listen, even without having that knowledge at this point, <laughs> it honestly doesn't matter to me because... The vast majority of what Kwame was saying was so incredibly real and on point and like we needed it so I'm gonna ignore that phone. We needed it so bad to just to hear that that uh, what I need to happen is I need him to replace Shaq on inside inside uh the NBA. <laughs> I need him to replace Shaq and my God, that'll be the best T V of all time. Of all time. <laughs> but no, man, uh oh man, I don't know. I don't I, there's so many directions to go in with this 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 uh story. I need, how about you ask a few more questions? Because I'm talking, pick any any angle. Okay. Actually, first, let me say this. Go ahead. I have to make this disclaimer, this public service announcement. Kwame, you the man. You the truth. Appreciate you. Apologize to you. But you're going to stop generalizing us light-skinned folks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going you're gonna to stop coming at all of us. Malcolm X was light-skinned, okay, bro? You get what I'm saying? Like, we're not all Becky with the good hair. Look at me. I'm not Becky with the good hair. I'm a real one, all right? So stop generalizing all of us. You know what I'm saying? Stop putting us in that box. Not all of us sensitive and having our girls get took by, uh, by Derek Fisher, <laughs> of all people, <laughs> driving 95 miles 
angry, jumping over fences. We're not all that guy. <laughs> my wife, my wife, he good. Just just want to put that out there. You know what I'm saying not all of us light skinned folks is crazy. Right. <laughs> Couldn't resist. So oh, man. with him being Becky with the uh, good hair. He said he said he didn't <sighs> have Jackson on the on the knee about Kwame. It was about something totally different. And Kwame took it out of context. Out of context. So do Kwame has a, do he even have a point of coming at them? I mean, I know we've been bagging him for twenty one years. All of but, us. But do we should we apologize to Kwame? And do and did they have a a reason to come at them? Because I've seen the thing with Gibbard Arenas, mm-hmm. and he was just breaking down what happened. It didn't sound like he was really coming for Kwame. Did he go? Did he take out of context where like uh, man, I gotta say something now? Uh, again, like I, I still need to, and I'm gonna do that as soon as we leave here. My man, uh, Mr. Darius, uh, hit me up kind of short notice, mm-hmm. so I'm still trying to. I was still diving into everything. And look at me looking, uh, still diving in everything. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, we've been bagging that man, all of us, mm-hmm. for over, what, 20 years, like he yeah, said. Yeah. Uh, especially Stephen. Hey, my God, he goes at him so often. He, like, you don't realize it until uh, Kwame pointed it out. But on that alone, on, at that standpoint alone, he definitely has a point and has a reason to say something now. Whatever, he has a reason to say something now at this point. And if you've listened to everything he said, my God, he's speaking so much truth mm-hmm. that a lot of us needed to hear that just, you can't do anything but appreciate it. I'm going to order my, um, I'm my mama's son's short shirt tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so I got a bootleg one on the way. Sorry, Kwame. Uh, but in the meantime, right. that's, that's just the meantime. I got, I'm going to order, order the fish in the joint. I just heard he, uh, he's getting them made. So. Gotcha. So with, with him, um, with him being bagged on about being the number one draft pick, everybody calling him a bus. Um, a, do you think he's a bust? I mean, I heard some good arguments of the day by him playing 12 years in the league. You can't even call him a bust. Because uh, he did make it. You know, most busts, you think about Ron Lee that played in the NFL, he was gone after two years. <laughs> and Jamarcus Russell was gone after his contract. This man continued to be on a team, continue to do his thing. He averaged like nine and nine and nine or nine and ten, which is, you know, big men was faded now at the time he came in. So, do we still consider him a bust? And then two to that question, do we have a point to where it seems like black reporters do bash on black players sometimes? Because we all give LeBron James a hard time. He's he's a decent human being being a black man, but we do bash on him. So do we have a point somewhat? Ooh, that man first. That man is the exception to the rule mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Um, yes, uh, I guess question two, yes, we do definitely unfairly and unevenly target black men and speak on them in a negative light when they do bad things. Mm-hmm. Well, he gave an example of the uh, of a white football player, Chris something. I, I honestly can't remember uh, what he did, who he was, but he gave an example. That story, you know, you speak about it for a few days, that's it. Mm-hmm. But then you focus and you lock in on the black athletes. Every chance we absolutely get, and that's all you hear about, it's in the cycle. That cycle seems to last forever, that new cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, question one, I've already forgotten. We're not going to blame the yak, but you're going to repeat it for me because <laughs> I'm answering out of order. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, was he a bust? Was he a bust? Uh, as far as first round draft pick standards go, I mean, you, number, yeah, I'm sorry, not first round, number one draft pick. Um, I mean, you obviously have to say yes, but then you hear the backstory and some of the details we didn't know about uh, where Kwame, I just heard it today, Kwame was saying, you know, Jordan would have him practice for three to four hours right before a game. Yeah, uh, you, you didn't hear it. See? See, right? See how that, you're like, whoa, whoa. He said, uh, Jordan had him practice in three to four hours right before a game. Then he put him in when they're down 25, 30. You know, he's not only is he exhausted because he just practiced for four hours, you know, but they're down 25, 30. And then somehow we change the narrative or address the narrative where he's to blame for them losing or not doing well. It's like, what can you really do with that? And he tried to, he tried to give receipts. He said, um, you know, you can check with other NBA players whose names I've already forgotten right. as far as confirming what he just said. You know, they had him on a bag and say, man, this is absolutely crazy what they're doing to you. I mean, if that's true, then absolutely not. You can't call him a bust. Right. So, I mean, with those uh, 
and our circum or, oh my god how am i forget no not circumstance oh. uh <laughs> circumstantial uh situation all that stuff those details i mean you can't call them a bus and i will say this too um we've been knocking michael jordan for a long time about his draft picks uh, how he doesn't draft as well but what i heard about the kwame brown story was that wasn't his guy it was yeah. one of those things he was drafting him Elton Brand. For Elton Brand, Elton Brand, which made sense at the time because Elton Brand was one of the top mm-hmm. leagues in the league at the time. I don't know if that was with Chicago, the Clippers, or Philly. I don't know who he was playing with. And um, the owner of the Washington Wizards kind of vetoed it, like, no, we ain't doing this. And that's when they say Jordan just, like, like abused him. Abused him, yeah. Uh, to the point that Kwame said he, he wanted to fight Elton Brand. He 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 said uh, like Jordan will have him carrying bags and doing all sorts of just unnecessary extra stuff, taking out his anger on him. And Elton Brand would laugh and point, fu- you know, make fun of him. You know, other players had his back, but he said Elton Brand especially would uh, go out of his way to abuse him as well because you know he was Jordan's guy. So Kwame well, said he wanted to beat that man down on several occasions. And who could blame him if all of this uh, turns out to be true? Right. Which I, I'm inclined to believe Kwame at this point. It's just. He has no reason to lie. Has no reason to lie. It's been tw- exactly. It's been twenty-one years. Why well, he's been living good, like he said, he's, he just got through uh, mowing his four and a half acres. He has no reason to all of a sudden start speaking up and, and tell lies. There's no reason for it. So that's my guy right now. <laughs> and one thing that Kwame said about being a bus um, minus the light skin. Hey, we're not gonna let that slide, Kwame. He told us to stop hating on black folks. I'm black too. I'm a little sh- lighter shade of black. But you're going to stop generalizing us. We're not going to let this slide. When you get the light skin coalition. Yeah, when I get pulled over, I got just as much risk of getting shot in the face <laughs> as, my, as my man behind the camera here. So I'm going to need you to slow down with generalizing. We all hate Matt Barnes right now. He, he doesn't represent us. N- neither him nor Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that it was necessary for Kwame? Drake cool. Do you feel it was necessary for Kwame to call out Stephen A. Smith, a six-year-old man, that he was talking about fighting? Ooh, man, I almost kind of wish you didn't ask me this question. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why, because I don't have the same uh, opinion of Stephen A. at this point as what it seems most of our, our black brethren. Mm-hmm. I do not think he's a coon. I just don't. I mean, he could be, uh, let me say, I might be wrong, but I I also know for a fact that he said a lot of very real, very positive um, things that black people need to hear that they don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. And if that makes him a coon, then uh, he's not a coon to me. Like He's he's told some harsh truths about us, which we all need to accept. Now, if there's some coon stuff he's done that I'm kind of overlooking or whatever the case may be, forgive me. Show it to me, and I'll be like, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm quick to call somebody Uncle Ruckus. But <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I can't discount or 100% disagree with everything the man said. So I'm, I'm torn about his attack of uh, Stephen A. And, I, and also, I don't know exactly what Stephen A. said that made him lash out. I haven't heard that yet. That's another thing I was trying to uh, catch up on before we came in here. But if you can enlighten me. Score on the math, EOGs. Shout out to my young black queens. Miss Anaya Rankin. Um, I'm not supposed to be here right now. I'm supposed to be spoiling her, but when I get home, we'll take care of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel you on that, brother. But one of the things that um, led Kwame to attack Stephen A. Smith, his name is Kwame Brown. But we all know Stephen A. Smith be like, Kwame Brown. And so I think all the years of Stephen A. Smith lashing out on his name, and I think, you know, he said, you know, he took the, the words from uh, Baby. you going to put respect on my name. I think that what really got him mad. That's what got him, you know, hyped. Because it's like, dude, you, you've been dissing me forever. He said, I was an 18-year-old kid that you kept attacking that was dealing with mental, a mental state of mind design because of the, of the responsibilities. And I think instead of them coming to him and trying to help him, the bashing would got Kwame mad at Stephen A. Smith because he is the he is the president of the Kwame Brown bashing tour. Lord so, knows. So I mean, that's what got Kwame in his feelings right now about Stephen A. Smith. <sighs> not only not not just an eighteen year old number one draft pick, but he was drafted and joined the team of not only his idol but everyone's basketball. He came in immediately under Michael Jordan. 
can you imagine the pressure? <laughs> and then when everything doesn't work out the way it's supposed to and Jordan's not the guy that you thought he was, right. or thought he would be, like right. it's what well, they say, never meet your idols. Yeah, yeah. And then your idol's an asshole as far as he's concerned. Like, there's just, oh my God, I can't even imagine. And the way the way he's handled it, obviously, all of these years, how can you not respect that man? Sure. He hasn't he he didn't write a um autobiography, he didn't go nuts and bash Jordan every chance he got. He did, he's not in jail for losing his he's Handling his stuff. He, he still have not. I was saying, even he now. Even now, yeah, he's he's being very uh, professional about it. Respect yeah. was as respectful as one can expect, but. But my, my now listen, we're gonna go left field with this right here. My question is, I wonder if Michael Jordan got some hitters because he ain't said nothing about Mike. And even in Matt Barnes, <laughs> Matt Barnes gave him the segue to this Mike. He said, "Blame Mike for drafting you." And I thought Kwame was gonna say, "Yeah, he drafted me," but da 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 da. But he ain't said nothing. So that that lets me know Mike may have some hitters over there. If you come crazy for Mike, you may come up missing. That's all you, I'm saying. You know what that immediately makes me think about is uh, God. We might be getting disrespectful at this point. If that's the case, uh, why didn't he handle uh, the folks who took out his father? Sure, sure. Now, I'm not saying Michael doesn't. He's a billionaire. Of course he can. He has hitters. Like that's that's a no brainer. Like that's a no brainer. He has hitters. But um, why didn't he handle the, the guys who took out his dad? Unless he was young at the time in '93. Uh, yeah, you're right. Unless you're young, right. He didn't really know. But now being a billionaire status, might they be might not be around right now, and we just don't know because right. his hitters are that good. <laughs> They're probably not around right now. Oh man. So there's that. Uh, and then Matt. Uh, but he makes, but he, he did. But Kwame did make some some points though, of the people that's dissing him. Gibber Arenas was good for a stretch. So all we, all we remember about Stephen Jackson is fighting in the uh, Palace of Armored Hills. <laughs> all you remember about Matt Barnes is thinking the ball in his face. <laughs> yeah, man. So it's like ain't like you talk about some guys that were some starting names. LeBron James, Kobe, I mean Curry. Jordan would diss him and say he was a bum. I get it. And Kobe did. And, uh, you know, uh, Kwame still hasn't much respect to him because the man, you know, God rest his soul. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been gone out of line, gotten out of line of disrespect to Kobe. But like you say, you make sense. It's it's Kobe. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> Stephen Jack, you're right. I, I actually didn't think about that. Uh, think about it from that perspective yet. They're, I don't want to say nobody. Um, but by comparison, uh -huh. yeah, he said Matt Barnes is uh, going out of his way to appear tough, which obviously is the case at this point. Faking, faking DMs like roll up on me. He don't want to roll up on Kwame Brown. That man's seven plus, seven foot plus. Two seventy. <laughs> he he doesn't want that. He doesn't want that smoke. He, he, he a country boy. Mm -hmm. Kwame country. Kwame is, is the truth, man. I honestly I can't say it enough how bad I feel. About falling for the okie doke like everyone else all these years, making jokes and laughing along with Stephen A. Kwame's the truth. He deserves so much more respect than what he's gotten. True. And he's handled himself so much better than. I mean, can you imagine? Like we said, all of that pressure, all of these years, and we're just now hearing something from him. And even now, he's not getting out of line, losing his mind. He's just speaking facts, speaking facts and having fun with it, enjoying himself, to be honest. And I feel like we've gotten so far away from whatever your last question was, but that's just, that's the nature of the way my mind works. So we're going to roll with it. Go roll with it. <laughs> but with Rachel Nichols, with him, I mean, I, I can't really say what he's saying because I can't remember all of it, but he kind of dissed her for being the gatekeeper of this media thing and controlling narratives. And by her being white, she never gave like black people, true black brothers a, a chance. They want to keep it to where... He said, he said today when I listened to him, Stephen A. Smith changed the way he talked to Sam Moore White. Only person on TV that sound black now is Shannon Sharp. He's like an uncle that you would see at a cookout. It's Shannon. He keeps it natural as a black person. So do you do you say Kwame, you're going too far about the Rachel Nichols thing? Or what? That's one of his points, one of his, the few points he made that I disagree with. Uh -huh. Being eloquent, speaking intelligently. Is not speaking white. That that is something that us as a black people, we have to let go of. That that's just 
it's just so ignorant and so stupid. I'm keeping it real by not knowing words and not being able to speak with intelligence. No, you stupid. Like, just, there's nothing wrong with learning and being educated. Of course, Stephen A. goes above and beyond. My God, but that's but that's his shtick. Like that's that's just his his character, if you will. But but in general, speaking intelligently, not cursing every other word. That doesn't. Yeah, like he he what was he he kept pushing the issue of. He kept saying, "I'm speaking masculine. I'm I'm being real. I'm no Negro. You just cursing. Like it's it's like just." You know what I'm saying? If you take the time and effort to speak with eloquence, you'll have so many more people that'll listen. Mm -hmm. Like, to be perfectly honest, I love what he's saying, but there are times where he's going in, so like, my, my daughter walks in, okay, I have to turn it down or turn it off. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? My, my 10 year old can't listen to that. Right. Or it's my wife is like, what are you listening to? Like, she doesn't even hear the importance and intellig uh, intelligence in what he's saying because when she walks in, all she hears is mother, blah, 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 like, Come on, man. Like, there's nothing that doesn't make you white. It doesn't make you a sellout. You're just being respectful, intelligent. I mean, it's that simple. So that's one major point I disagree with him that he kept trying to drive home is no, I'm being a real one. I'm being masculine. No, 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 no. You're being simple and just lazy, to be perfectly honest. Um, you said something else beside that. You got me on that deal. I wanted to speak on that so bad. Oh, I just. Wow. Uh, before, yeah, you said Rachel Nichols. Um, Rachel Nichols. That's what you just asked me about her and being the gatekeeper. Yeah, I'll, gatekeeper of media. Do you think she's a gatekeeper of media that controls <laughs> the narrative for for, for the for how people view black athletes or white athletes? I absolutely agree that she can control that narrative, and she is a gatekeeper. There are many. Excuse me, but. I definitely disagree. Another point at which I disagree with uh, uh, Mr. Kwame, who I love, you my guy. But uh, no, nah, she doesn't go out of her way to bash black people or do anything like that. I mean, I, I just don't see it. Like, how do I even? Uh, you can thank God you're editing. Let me let me have a moment to think. <laughs> or you can keep it in. I don't care. It might be funny. Uh, she obviously loves. Okay, here's the truth. I feel like Rachel Nichols wants to smash every black dude. <laughs> every dude. Like she she wants to smash it. Like that's that's her thing. Like she's in love with these dudes. She doesn't go out of her way to black. She's like as as close to a real one as a, a white woman can be. She's a she's a comic geek. If anyone that knows me knows that gave her ten thousand points. Like she knows her comic stuff. Right. And the fact that she's that down to earth and not afraid to be a full out geek. Did you see the whole the whole thing the NBA did with a with the the MCU mm -hmm. mashup and everything? Like she knew all her facts and like she knew stuff that you only. Like it wasn't a tips felt fed to her by producers and stuff. No, she knew her ish right. and she was excited to do those shows. Right. She's a true geek. I freaking love Rachel Nichols. I don't care. She can call me. In, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Um, but no, I love Rachel Nichols, so it's, it's I, may, I may be a bit biased. Gotcha. Maybe. And if anyone can present evidence to me that she goes out of her way to bash black men, then so be it. I'll accept it. I'm definitely open to anything. But no, I disagree that she, she goes out of her way to bash black people. I just, I absolutely do not see it. Gotcha. It's that simple. Now, I know we joked earlier. About I love you, Rachel. Oh, you, you got me too. Rachel, listen, I'm married. I'm married. But, but I'm gonna always be married. <laughs> yes, I love my wife, and uh, I'm gonna forget that whole. But you're my, you're my crush. <laughs> no, no. Listen, if me and my wife got divorced, which we'll never do, so there's no point in continuing this conversation. Well, I mean, get help me, okay, save me from my own ignorance right, right now. Here we go. Next question. <laughs> since, since you said it earlier. You're not Becky with the good hair, light skin, but you are a light skin bro, and you do have kids. Mm -hmm. Did Kwame go too far with the whole Matt Barnes thing? I mean, it was funny. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> oh my God, he called him a golden retriever. <laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm, only thing he left out was calling him Soul Glow. <laughs> 
So low. Just let you. Um. But he do, but he did he go too far with kids? Cause he said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. He said something specifically about kids. I missed yeah, he, that. He said something about Derek Fisher being the stepdad in the coat. Uh, he said something about do you feel? He said do you feel some type of way that he may he may be inadequate to his size of his penis? Cause you saw that man in the shower. This is what Kwame may say. I heard that. Part. So did he go too far with this man about your wife wouldn't leave because his penis probably was better than yours and your kids calling him daddy now? I'm like, damn. <laughs> This man drove, what was it, 95, 95, 95 miles. Why do we have that number stuck in our head? God D, boy. Um, once the door is open to, uh, what do we call it? I guess the dirty dozen, if you want to. Once that door is open, the winner is the person who goes the farthest. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a cruel game. It's ugly, but... That those dims be the rules. <laughs> dims be the rules. So who can go the deepest? That's who wins. This man said. He's right. He said, uh, you can't be a man. He said, that man had to be sitting there right next to you texting your wife on the on the bench. <laughs> but, oh my God. He wins. What, what, what did he call me though? Because <laughs> Matt, Matt Barnes Matt Bar said, I'm not there. On his, on his response, on his rebuttal back, Matt said, you can't be fighting Stephen A. Smith because he's 60. But you can fight me because I want all the smoke. So, as fans and consumers of the entertainment, do we want to see these two get it on? First, I want to answer as a Christian. Okay. No, we don't want to see this violence and this terribleness and this awfulness. Now I want to answer as a, a fallible... <laughs> A terrible, awful, sinning human being. I want to see Kwame stomp this little man because he's <laughs> pretending to want all this smoke. He clearly doesn't want it. Kwame uh, said, first Matt said that he DM'd uh, Kwame. Kwame said, you absolutely did not DM me. You're lying to the people. Show the receipts. Show the proof. Mm -hmm. If he hasn't shown the proof, I I'm inclined to believe Kwame. Mm -hmm. So not only are you lying and fronting and pretending that you want the smoke, now you're saying you're gonna, you know, you're gonna air this man out, you gonna whatever, whatever it may be. We clearly know you don't want it, so you need to get your ass whipped. Yes. <laughs> you need to get straightened out. You know what I'm saying? You can't just because you have the bigger stage, the bigger format, mm -hmm. you know, the more followers, all that good stuff. That doesn't mean you're the better man. Kwame kept making that point. You're not better than me. You're not above me just because of all this nonsense. Right. And I like to see the I like to see the underdog, the underdog. You know, prove that eh, no, no, no. It's not like that. Yeah, I need you. Uh, I'm going to air. Yeah. Long story short, I want to see Kwame air him out. Yeah, I do. I'm sorry. Lord forgive me. So I want to see him get aired out. Where is your boy at now? This. Where is Stephen Jackson? I haven't oh heard. God. I haven't heard Stephen Jackson say anything. Well, has he attacked Stephen Jackson? Like, what? Where? What position does he play in his entire thing? Or what role does he play? In his I entire think thing? Stephen Jackson said something in the initial. Give Arenas, Jackson, and Barnes conversation. I mean, he mostly been on. Um, he, he mostly been on uh, Matt Barnes, but he did say Stephen Jackson had a big nose. He did say something about his teeth. Uh, he did say something about him being a fake thug or whatever with the fight. He's a fake thug. He said, "Bro, I know you." I don't know. He said he was sleeping on. He was sleeping something because Stephen Jackson said something about. Real men don't drive trucks. We drive like expensive cars. And Kwame said, "That's so how ignorant Joe A is." By yeah, that's backwards as hell. Yeah, he said, "You from Texas and you know about trucks and you talk about fancy cars." So I mean, it was like all that build up, but he wasn't saying nothing like, "Want me a dually so bad?" Right, and, and like <laughs> when Kwame, I mean, but Stephen Jackson never said nothing to Kwame. Far as man, I'm gonna fight you. He, I don't think he about that. I don't think he want all the smoke either. Man. <sighs> Uh, I guess I'm torn. I have a lot of respect for Steven Jackson. That's what the he did with George Floyd. Not only that, and that was his boy. That's yeah. that's crazy. Not only that, did you see the whole video he did um, uh, detailing his his not marriage? Did you see that? Mm, oh, man, it's great. Um, I'm trying to sum it up because I know you don't have a whole lot of time. He was going to get married to this woman. He was in love. He kept telling her for months and months, you know, you got to sign this prenup. Mm -hmm. She came in with nothing. Yeah, He's yeah. an NBA baller. She kept putting off, I don't have time. 
blah, 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 blah. Long story short, they literally got to the wedding day. Um, she called in a, a, a preacher, her pastor or whatever, not her pastor, but the pastor she was referenced to, or she was referenced, um, instead of Stephen A's pastor, who he knew and loved, he's like, oh, it's cool, we can, we can do your pastors, whatever, I love you. He said, he gets to the wedding day, and he's like, um, you still haven't signed his prenup. His two boys, God, who was it? Two other enemies, Stephon Marbury, mm -hmm. and um, God, somebody else he was playing with at the time. Anyway, those two players were like, wait, she ain't signed a prenup? Nah, you, you're not doing this. You're not, it's not going down. The pastor that she hired comes in. He's like, I don't believe in prenups. She's like, ah, there it is. That's why she wanted this pastor so bad. Long story short, he didn't marry her. She, and then she tried to cry. And like, oh, man, I'll sign a prenup. Stephen A was like, no, I'm too smart for that. You can't sign a contract under duress. That'll be thrown out. Yeah. Boom. So he didn't marry her. He goes out. He smashes her best friend that night. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 a great, you know, it's great for him. He, obviously, she was trying to set him up. Right. Clearly, who doesn't have time to do this? Right. So, um, but yeah, since that, it gave me a little extra respect for Stephen A. Smith. I just love that story. So, I'm so far off topic yet again to give me a second to come back to the original. How do I feel? I don't know what. Um, I didn't hear Kwame go at Stephen too much, and I don't know what Stephen did to Kwame. I really don't know what to tell you. I need some, I need some more research. Yeah, but, that, but, that's not, but I hope you enjoyed the story, folks. That was, yeah. That's a good story. You should look it up. Stephen A. describing his uh, yeah. not marriage. Stephen Jackson, Jesus. <laughs> don't make that mistake. <laughs> and, uh, describing his marriage. It's a great, it's a great little uh, YouTube video. So you, we definitely going to check that out. We're we going we to try to tag He tells that. the story much better than I did. We're going to try to tag that into the... Uh, the descriptions on this show as well but it's been fun talking about Kwame we're gonna talk about him some more because I don't think Kwame's going nowhere you definitely come back on the show I pray Kwame's not going nowhere and I'm telling you I'm coming back because this is fun I'm glad I finally uh stopped being uh too busy <laughs> got my butt in here oh man thank you for inviting me this is fun definitely definitely so y'all make sure y'all hit the uh <laughs> Make sure y'all go hit the subscribe button, hit the notification Absolutely. bell, man. Share this video so when we go live, y'all get all the up-to-date uh, videos because we got more stuff coming with Kwame. We got things coming with my man talking about his life and being across seas for a while. So we got a lot of things coming, man. So y'all just stay ready. Love y'all. Grand Dossier TV, we out. No, we're not out. Okay. We're ahead. not out. This is an important social issue. I know we've made a lot of jokes. Um, try to get serious for a moment. Give me a second. It's very important that we, as a people, <sighs> stop clowning light-skinned people. We're not all the same, okay? Kwame, straighten up, bro. Like, I love you. I'm a fan now. I apologize to you, but stop giving red bones so much got the hell, okay? It's hard enough out here for a pimp. God dang, man. I'm tired of being put in this box like black people. You know what I'm saying? You don't like getting shot at by cops. I don't like getting shot at by them either. Always the darkies, they do it. Always the darkies. I don't even like to call you darkies. I feel bad about it. You know, you quick to call me high yellow. Shame on you. Shame on all of you. Shame on thinking we all pretty boys and we all in this little shame on you. You're not, you're not your mama's son. That's what you're not when you do that. I'm my mama's son. My mama red bone too. Good woman. You spit on my mama name? Ah, right. ooh boy, I dare you. Man, take this mic off. Boy, I had to find Kwame Brown like Matt Bones. I drive 95 miles. I got no problem with it. I ain't mad.